in one of our recent videos, I mentioned the absolute necessity of drilling. So today I'm going to take you through one of my all-time favorites, the first four. Like many of our most effective drills, the beauty of the first four lies in its simplicity. Four shots are played, and then one point is awarded. You'll need two players, two paddles, and a few balls. Player A is serving to player B, who is cross-court from him. Both players are positioned behind the baseline. In the first progression, player A serves the ball to player B, who hits the return cross-court. Now, I know what you're thinking. Morgan, this is revolutionary. How did you come up with this? Sit tight, folks. It gets even better. Player A then hits a third shot drop to the cross-court kitchen, while player B looks to get into good position up at the line. One point is up for grabs and will be awarded to one of the players provided a few conditions are met. Firstly, the serve must go in, and secondly, the return must land cross-court. If either of those two are not met, then the point is replayed. A point is awarded to the server if they successfully manage to drop the ball and the returner cannot play a volley, or if the volley played lands out or in the net. A point is awarded to the returner if they are able to play the fourth ball as a volley that lands in the court or the third ball is out or in the net. Player A serves five points in a row, followed by player B who does the same. The game ends when one player reaches 11 points. Simple, right? Let's see a few points played out. Notice how the quality of the serve seriously impacts the returner's ability to get up to the kitchen line in a timely fashion, and therefore doesn't require the server to hit a particularly short third shot drop to get that ball to bounce. On the flip side, a great return that incorporates good transition forward throughout the stroke gives the players lots of time to get up to the line, but also to shift their lateral position to take more balls out of the air. Now it's time to make things a little more difficult for the server. In the second progression of the first four, the server doesn't just need to drop the ball effectively on the third, they also need to play at least one ball in the transition area that also bounces. If the server can do that, a point is awarded to them, but if the returner is able to volley either the fourth or sixth ball, then they get the point. Once again, missed serves or returns are replayed, and third or fifth balls that are unsuccessful result in a point awarded to the returner. Tough, I know, but the shoe will soon be on the other foot once five points are played. Again, first to 11 points, win by two. In the last progression, aside from the serve and returns being cross-court, the only rule is that the server must drop until they reach the kitchen line. Sorry, no smash and grab freebies for you. The game uses rally scoring, each player again gets five serves in a row, and it will seem like a conservative version of skinny singles. If you have completed the first two progressions well, then you will be in a good rhythm with your third and fifth shot drops, so consider this your final test to see if you can perform them under more realistic pressure. If and when the point results in a dink exchange, play the point out cross-court with the full array of shots, except the lop, which would often be fielded by your opponent's partner. Today's drill video exemplifies high percentage pickleball. To win points on serve, players need to see the relationship between the quality of the serve and the ease of which they can successfully drop the third ball. By contrast, to win points on return, the player needs to return with good depth and afford themselves plenty of time to move up to the kitchen line. Get out there, give it a try, and let me know how this one helped you. Till next time, see you at the kitchen line.